الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد ذي عطه منشي رحمه الله تعالى باب لا يرد من سأل بالله لا يرد من سأل بالله The chapter with regards to the issue that the one who asks the one who asks someone for something by Allah then they should not be turned away nor should they be rejected the one who asks someone something by Allah he asks for some money or for some help and he says by Allah by, by Allah sa'idni by Allah a'tini kada by Allah give me this billah a'tini billahi sa'idni like this by Allah help me by Allah give me some money or loan me some money or uh, aid me in this circumstance and situation the one who asks in the name of Allah he should not be turned away nor should he be rejected and this is again from the issue of having manners and etiquettes noble and good manners and etiquettes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the veneration and magnification of Allah azza wa jal if somebody asks for a need to be taken care of or some assistance in the name of Allah then from honoring Allah one should respond to that and not reject that individual one he should respond and not reject that individual whenever he is asked in the name of Allah so whenever a believer hears the name of Allah and then someone asking asking by his name subhanahu wa ta'ala billahi help me with this affair by Allah help me with that affair and the likes like this then a believer he will hear this person mentioning the name of Allah like this and he will honor and respect that and magnify this issue the fact that the name of Allah is mentioned and this person is requesting by the name of Allah azawajal and he will honor that and he will not reject that person and he will help him and aid him and he will not turn him away from what he from what he is requesting and uh, this is a condition yani that the person he will ask for something that is permissible the person he will ask for for something that is permissible that he would help him in that manner that he would help him in that manner so this is the chapter with regards to this the author he says an ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma annahu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man istaadha billahi fa'idhu fa'idhuhu wa man sa'ala billahi fa'atuhu wa man da'akum fa'ajibuhu wa man sana'a ilaykum ma'rufan fa'kafi'uhu fa'in lam tajidu ma tukafi'uhu fad'u lahu hatta taraw annakum qad kafatumuhu رواه أبو داود والنسائي بسند صحيح رواه أبو داود والنسائي بسند صحيح. so the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى the narration of Ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said whoever seeks refuge with Allah whoever seeks refuge with Allah then give him refuge whoever seeks refuge with Allah then give him refuge and whoever asks you by Allah then give it give to him what he asked for and whoever invites you to an invitation then respond to his invitation and whoever does good to you whoever does an act of kindness or goodness to you then you should repay him and if you do not have something to repay him with then supplicate for him until you know that you have until you know that you have repaid him the narration is corrected by Abu Dawood and the Nasai and the author he says Rahimahullah with uh, an authentic chain with an authentic chain. So this narration consists of a, a number uh, of issues. The first of them, Aristiyadah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man billahi fa'a'idhuhu. That whoever seeks refuge with Allah, then give him refuge. Whoever seeks the protection of Allah, meaning from some evil, then uh, protect him from that. Meaning if a person, uh, he said to someone, A'udhu billahi min sharrik. A'udhu billahi min sharrik. I seek refuge with Allah from your evil. I seek refuge with Allah from your evil. If somebody was oppressing him, for example, I seek refuge with Allah from your oppression. I seek refuge with Allah from your lies. He said that to somebody, and in the name, I seek refuge with Allah from you and the evil that you are upon. Then it's incumbent for that person to give him refuge in that which he seeks. 
يعني honoring and respecting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is from the perfection of it tawheed and if a person is denying someone their rights or if he is harming them or if he's going to for example strike them or the likes like this he will say a'udhu billahi an tadribani i seek refuge with Allah that you will strike me or that you will hit me aw an tadurrani fi mali for example that you harm me in my wealth i seek refuge with Allah from you and your evil then it's incumbent for that person to desist and give him refuge and give him protection and uh, keep him far from the evil that he sought refuge from or from the evil of someone else and yani, a'udhu billahi uh, a'udhu billahi min sharri any fulan i seek refuge with Allah from the evil of someone so and the likes like this so now if a person he has the ability it's incumbent for him to protect him from the evil of that person it's incumbent for him now to aid him and to support him and help him uh, to find refuge from the evil of that person that that he said this affair any yani, about so this is uh, this is the issue but likewise again this is with something that is allowed or something that is allowed for example if somebody came uh, and he was uh, going to do an action that is impermissible or an action that is lowly and foul and then someone wanted to prohibit him he would not be able to seek refuge with Allah from him now and, he, and expect him to stop him for example someone who's going to purchase alcohol then he would say to him a'udhu billahi an tamna'ani min al-khamr for example like this I seek refuge with Allah that you stop me from alcohol from purchasing alcohol or stop or, or from drinking alcohol at this time this will not have any effect or have any weight whether he will continue to stop him and he would not be able to say oh no I must give him refuge now so he can purchase his alcohol or I must not harm him so that he can drink his alcohol that at this time this issue it will not have any value or have any weight but if someone seeks refuge with Allah for something then it's incumbent for someone to help them and give them refuge in that uh, if they have the ability then the uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned the next issue which is the shahid and the point of evidence for the author man sa'ala billahi fa'atuhu and the one who asks by Allah any in the name of Allah the one who asks you for something in the name of Allah then give him then you should give him and this is the issue here and this is uh, again uh, these affairs here are in uh, veneration and magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and honoring the name of Allah and whenever Allah's name is mentioned a believer uh, he, he shows respect and he, he shows honor and whenever someone he asks uh, in the name of Allah or by the name of Allah it's as if he's swearing on that person as if he's swearing on that line he's swearing to Allah and he is swearing to Allah against that person if he said uh, billah, uh, and kada wa kada min al -mal. I ask you by Allah to give me this, this much money or that much money it's as if he's saying Uqsimu billahi kada wa kada min al -mal. it's as if he's saying I swear by Allah you're going to give me this and that much money from the from, from the wealth like this so therefore uh, whenever the name of Allah is sworn by a believer he will not uh, turn uh, a heedless uh, eye or heart to that rather this would be something great in his heart and he will honor that and he will respect that and this is from the rights of brotherhood likewise that if a person he swears by Allah uh, against someone that they will do such and such then that person he will fulfill that in order for uh, his brother not to invalidate his oath in order for his brother not to invalidate his oath yani ibra ibra al qasim aw ibra al muqsim this is uh, from the rights of, of brotherhood but the issue here is that whenever a believer hears this i swear by allah you're going to give me this or, or you, you will help me with that or by allah help me with this or in the name of allah help me with that and the likes like this a believer he will hear this affair and this person mentioning the name of allah and this need and this circumstance and he will honor that and he will give that to the individual and he will give that to, to the individual. And then after this, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Man And whoever invites you to an invitation, then respond to him. It's recommended to respond. Yani in general, to all of the invitations of, of a believer, unless there is some harm there. Or unless there is a, a reason that would prohibit the person from attending. Uh, or le unless, unless he had an excuse then uh, to respond to his invitations for food and the likes then this is recommended except in the case of a marriage invitation whenever someone is married and they're having the walima walima to the urs the walima for marriage and the likes like this then the people of knowledge they mention 
that this is an obligation to respond. So it's an obligation to respond whenever there's a walima for marriage, but other than that from the walaim and from the invitations for gathering for food and the likes, then it's recommended. Unless a person, he has an excuse, or unless there is some foul uh, munkarat or affairs that are impermissible being performed in these, in, uh, in these gatherings, and a person, he will not be able to stop it. And a person, he will not be able to stop it. So if it's an invitation for the food and dinner for wedding, then this is an obligation to respond. And if it's other than that, then it's recommended. And Allah knows best. And then the Prophet said, And whoever does some good to you, and yani whoever does a good deed and uh, an act of charity or kindness for you, then uh, recompense him, then pay him back. And if you do not have something to pay, to pay him back, then uh, you should supplicate for him. And then until you know, or, or you're certain that you have re repaid them, that you have paid them back. It's read like this. Until you think that you have paid them back. Until you think that you have, you have paid them back. So this is from the noble manners that a person, if, if someone does good to him and gives him a gift or gives him some help or gives him uh, some charity or gives him a kind word or advises him in a noble manner or helps him in his religion or helps him in his worldly affair or directs him or guides him or teaches him any, any type of ma'roof, any type of good uh, and, and beneficial affair from the issues of the religion or from the issues of the worldly life, someone who does this type of good to another, then he will repay them, either by doing the same type of good back to them and recompensing them from the same, or by supplicating for them until uh, one he sees or believes that uh, he has repaid him for, for that good. And he will continue to supplicate in this manner. This is from the noble affairs. And uh, contrary to that, from the lowly affairs is some of those people who are considered low lives that if you do good to them, then they will, they will do bad to you. Some people, they're like this. You do good to them and you are kind to them and you are nice to them and you advise them and you direct them and you teach them and educate them or you provide for them and you clothe them and you pay for them and then they have sharp tongues and they have rude uh, speech and they have lowly manners and even sometimes a person he will give more than what is obligatory rather he will give something that is free and from the kindness of his own heart seeking for the pleasure of Allah and then some of those low life, low life people will say oh so and so is stingy and so and so he does not give anything and the likes like this so this is contrary what is incumbent is to recognize the kindness and the goodness and the charity and uh, the, the, the beauty uh, of uh, a kind heart and the good deeds from others and to repay that, at least by supplicating for them. Uh, to repay that even if it's by supplicating for them and at least not to harm them or to oppress them or to do an injustice to them in return. Or to do an injustice to them in return. So the issue for the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَنْ سَأَلَ بِاللَّهِ فَأَعْطُوهُ And the one who asks, and the one who asks by Allah, or in the name of Allah, then you should give him. Then you should give him. The people of knowledge, they mention about the issue of asking in the name of Allah, asking by the name of Allah. There are certain circumstances and situations, or details with regards to this issue. The first, uh, the first uh, circumstance will be if a person he asked in the name of Allah for a right that he has coming, for a right that is established for him, and he lahu haqun wajibun, and he asked for that right. For example, a husband he will ask for the right that his wife owes, owes him that is upon her, or for or the 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 wife will ask for the right that the husband uh, must give her. For example, she asks any you know, for her right. Uh, to have clothing or for her right to have her own shelter or for her right any for her husband to take her to the store to buy her needs and the likes like this So if she said by Allah, you're going to take me to the store or by Allah take me to the store I ask you in the name of Allah to take me to get my needs. I need like this and, and the likes like this now It's an obligation for him to respond 
So it was already an obligation for him to take care of this affair in the first place. And whenever the, the request now came in the name of Allah, it's even more obligated. It's even more emphasized in its obligation. So it's an obligation for the man to take care of his wife. And there's obligations likewise from the, from, from the wife towards the husband. So if one of them asks the other one for, their, for that right to be filled, it's an obligation for them to perform that right and in the first place. But then if on top of that they ask for that right in the name of Allah, now it's even more emphasized. Now it becomes more severe. Now it becomes more severe. Likewise, if a, a, if a, a parent asks for a, a right, asks for his child to do something for him, asks for his child to do something for him, and it's, and it's something that yani, is from those obligations, and then uh, for the child to perform that is an obligation. And then if the parent asked in the name of Allah, then that obligation became more, more severe, it became more emphasized, it became more important and more obligatory, and more obligatory. So the first issue again is if a person, he asks for a right that he has, that is due to him, and he asks for that right in the name of Allah. Now it's obligatory to respond, and it's impermissible to reject them. And it is even more emphasized then the obligation is even more emphasized than it was before whenever the person he asked by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second issue is whenever a person he would ask for something that's not permissible. Who asks for something that's not permissible. For example, he would ask in the name of Allah for someone to give him some alcohol. For someone to give him to, to, to take him to the store to, to purchase some alcohol. By Allah, take me to the store like this he would say. To buy this and to buy that from the affairs that are haram. Or uh, I ask you in the name of Allah to uh, purchase this for me and that for me at the stores. For example, cigarettes or alcohol or other affairs that are impermissible. This is an example of that. It's not allowed to respond at this time. It's not allowed to respond at this time. And it's haram for that person to ask in this manner. What do you have to To ask for something that's haram in the name of Allah. This is a foul way. But the issue is here that a person, he will not respond to that. And it's not incumbent to, to, respond, to respond to that. The third circumstance, the people of knowledge they mention is the one who asks for something and in the name of Allah or by the name of Allah, but that would harm the individual who's being asked. It would harm him or bring uh, an extra uh, difficulty and hardship upon him, an extra difficulty or hardship upon him. For example, if somebody saw somebody, maybe he, he seen somebody, he has uh, a, a stack of cash. He has $2,000 in his hand. An individual, he has two thousand dollars in his hand, and somebody's seen that, and then he came and he said, "But he said, by Allah, give me five hundred dollars. By Allah, loan me five hundred dollars. By Allah, let me borrow five hundred dollars. But this two thousand dollars here is for the rent. It's just enough for the man's rent. It's not extra money. If he were to give, a, if he were to give any, a dollar from that, he'll be short in his rent." So to give $500 for free or for a loan in this circumstance will harm that individual. It will put him in a hardship and put him in difficulty and it would harm him. So at this time, it's not obligatory for him to give that money. It's not obligatory for him to give the money, nor is it obligatory for him to loan the money. Because this would harm him. This would harm him. So in this circumstance, any the, it's not incumbent. It's not incumbent. The fourth situation is that whenever someone he will ask in the name of Allah, or who asks by, by, by the name of Allah for something uh, that in reality by requesting this affair he is transgressing the limits and he is violating and he has gone too far. And in a situation like this likewise it would not be any incumbent uh, for, for one to respond to that. For example someone uh, would see a, a nice watch on his hand or someone would see a, a new phone that he has and he, and he just pulled it out and he said, uh, oh, by Allah, let me have that phone, <laughs> like this. Or by Allah, let me have that watch. That's a nice watch, by Allah. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me borrow it, like this, out of nowhere. And this is something yani, that's not proper or not right. Or somebody, for example, who have two, two nice cars. So, some brother maybe he has uh, a, a good occupation or Allah had blessed him in his wealth. He has two cars. So somebody would come by and say, by Allah, you will give me one of those cars. By Allah, let me have one of those cars. And you have two of them like this. This is also not allowed to ask for this. And this is transgressing the limits. This is violating the rights of others. It's not allowed 
to use this situation here by Allah, this and that, I swear by Allah, this and that, or in the name of Allah, this and that, and then violate the rights of others and, and harm them and their wealth and property and transgress against the, 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 their, their property and the life like this. So again, at this time, it's not an obligation to respond to that person. It's not an obligation to respond to that person. The fifth circumstance is whenever someone, he will be asked in the name of Allah for something, that's not a specific right. And uh, also, it's not something that's impermissible. And it's not something that will uh, harm him. It's not something that's transgressing the limits. And he'll be asked, in the, but someone will say, in, in the name of Allah, can, will you give me this? Or by Allah, can you give me that? Or loan me this or loan me that? And it's not necessarily an obligation. And it's not necessarily a dire need. And it's also not something that's going to harm the individual, one, the one being asked. It's not something transgressing the limits. Meaning it will be easy for him to give it. It would be easy for him to, to give and to fulfill the request. At this time, the people of knowledge, they differ. The majority of the scholars, they mentioned that it's recommended for him to give it. That, that it's recommended. He asked in the name of Allah or by the name of Allah for something that's not a, a necessary right. It's not something he deserves or has coming to him in the legislation. Nor is it something where he's transgressing the limits. Nor is it something that's haram. Nor is it something that is difficult or hard for the one being asked to provide. And if the one being asked provided it, it will not harm him physically or financially. It will not harm him. So here the people of knowledge, the majority of them, they say that it's recommended for him, for him to give that. It's recommended for him to give that. Others, they mention rather it's an obligation because of this narration here. وَمَنْ سَأَلَ بِاللَّهِ فَعَطُوهُ It's a command. So here it would not harm the individual. So some of the people of knowledge mentioned that it will be an obligation. Others, they mentioned uh, some brief details. And that would be if a person, he came to a specific individual, like somebody's neighbor, for example. Like somebody's neighbor, he came to, he went to his neighbor, and he knows the circumstance of his neighbor, and he knows that his neighbor is wealthy, wealthy and that he's doing well. And this particular individual, he's in dire straits, or he's in a hardship, or he's in a need. And he went to him, and he said, I ask you by Allah to loan me this and this and this so that I can take care of this need. My child is sick and I need to take him to the hospital, for example, when I don't have the money. Or, my, 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 or I have this other need like this. And the man, the neighbor, he knows he's, he's, in, he's truly in need. The neighbor, he knows he's truly in need. And the neighbor knows that uh, he, he's, not, uh, he's not playing games. And, and the likes like this. And he has the ability and it won't harm him. So here's some of the people of Nala's mentioned now since he specified this person. And he asked by the name of Allah and he's able to and it will not harm him and he will not harm him, then he should give him. He should honor the, the name of Allah. And whenever he asked in his dire straits, in this manner, and he specified him, he specified him with request. And he came to him and asked him, by Allah help me, by Allah aid me, by Allah loan me this money, by Allah pay for my child's such and such like this, then Allah knows best uh, a believer, he should honor this. And he should take care of that, especially if it will not harm him. Especially if it will not harm him. As for those individuals who are beggars and they ask anyone and everyone in the name of Allah. He will go to you and say, by Allah, give me this and this. By Allah, give me this and this. And he will turn to the next person who passes by and the next person who passes by. And everyone who yani, he, he sees, he asks him in the name of Allah. Then it's not incumbent to give this type of person here. And yani, he's just using this affair uh, as a means to support and he is begging and the likes like this. So the difference is here is the one who asked a specific individual and he for a specific reason. Then this is something that one should honor if he's able to. As for the one who's just asking anyone and everyone and the likes like this, like what they do in some, uh, in, in some of the lands, any of the, the people, they'll beg and they'll be beggars in the streets and then all they will say to you is, by Allah, give me this or by Allah, Give me that and the life like this. It's not an obligation. I need to give them. And Allah knows best. So the author, he says, Fihi masail. In this chapter, there are issues. Al-Ula, to man billah. The first issue is to give refuge to the one who seeks refuge in the name of Allah. Uh, who seeks refuge in the name of Allah. A'udhu billahi mink. Like this, min sharrik, min dhulmik, min sharri fulan. And the likes like this, then it's incumbent for the one who hears this to aid them and to help them and to give them refuge and to free from them from the, from the evil that they are afraid of or that they are seeking refuge with Allah from. 
الثاني يعطاء من سأل بالله The second issue is to give the one who asks in the name of Allah And the details of that have, have proceeded الثالثة إجابة الدعوة The third issue is to respond and to the invitation And likewise the details of that have, have proceeded الرابعة المكافأة على الصنيعة The fourth issue here is uh, again from those noble manners to respond uh, to repay those who, who do good to others to repay them either physically or by supplicating for them or even by both and uh, the fifth uh, issue here is that to supplicate for someone who did good to you is a means of repaying them for the one he is not able to to pay them back physically السادسة قوله حتى تروا أنكم قد كافأتموه until you know that you have repaid them again it has been recited like this or حتى تروا يعني until you think that you have you have repaid them until you think that you have repaid them meaning the one who supplicates for somebody in, in, to pay them back for the good that they have done to them then they will continue supplicating until they believe that they have uh, repaid them for that for that particular issue for that particular issue. After this, the author, he says, Babun la yus'alu bi wajhi Allahi illa al-jannah. Babun la yus'alu bi wajhi Allahi illa al-jannah. The chapter with regards to the issue that uh, one should not ask by the face of Allah for anything except for jannah. He should not ask by the face of Allah for anything except for, <coughs> except for jannah. Meaning he will not say, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi wajhika al-kareem. From the worldly affairs. From the worldly affairs. He will only ask, the, the noble and lofty affairs, from the affairs of Al Jannah, from the affairs of, of paradise, and that which will draw near to paradise likewise. And he, from the affairs of paradise. He will not say, Oh Allah, I ask you by, uh, by your noble face to give me a beautiful wife. Oh Allah, I ask you by your noble face to uh, provide me for, uh, a, a new car. Like this. These are from the worldly affairs. So a person, he can ask Allah this. He will ask Allah for these worldly affairs, but not by his face. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not say, Allahumma bi wajhika al-kareem as-saluka as-sayara jadida. For example, like this. Oh Allah, by your noble face, I ask you to provide me new, a new car. A new car. Or a beautiful wife. Or this much money. Or that much money. Anything from the worldly affairs. He will ask Allah Azza wa Jal, but not by, but not by his face. And he, again, this is from the manners and the etiquettes and uh, having respect for the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, if a person is going to ask by the face of Allah azza wa jal, he would not ask except for the highest and the best and the most lofty and noble of affairs. And that is al-jannah. And that which will draw one near to the jannah from statement and from deed. And has come in the supplication of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He will say Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannata Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannata Wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal Min qawlin aw amal Oh Allah, I ask you for jannah And that which will bring me close to that from deed and from action So to ask uh, to ask Allah by the face of Allah By his noble face subhanahu wa ta'ala Then he would, a person he will only ask for jannah or he will only ask for the deeds that will be a means to lead to Jannah, like the beneficial knowledge, for example, or the righteous actions, so on and so forth. All of these affairs are from those means that lead to Jannah, that lead to Jannah. So therefore, it's allowed to ask any in this manner likewise. So the author, he says, عن جابر رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يسأل بوجه الله إلا الجنة لا يسأل بوجه الله إلا الجنة that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, um, no, no one will ask by the, name, by the face of Allah for anything except for Jannah. No one will ask by the face of Allah for anything except for Al-Jannah. It's narrated by, by Abu Dawood. This, uh, this uh, narration has come bi sirat al-Nafi. Yani bi ma'na nahi. It's come here, it's negation. But what is intended is a prohibition. As if the affair is uh, so major that it did not even occur. It did not even occur, the sacredness of this affair. لا يسألوا بوجه الله إلا الجنة No one will ask by the face of Allah except for, for, for the Jannah. So if a person, he says, يعني, uh, أسألك 
uh, Allahumma bi wajhikar kareem. Yani he will only say the likes of these words here in the supplication, asking by the noble face of Allah for Jannah, or for that which would be a means to, to reach the Jannah, that will draw a person to Jannah. So the affairs that the people they ask for, and that they hope for, and that they desire are two types. Any of those affairs that are lofty and high, related to the religion and the affairs of the hereafter. Any from those means that lead to paradise. From the, those means that lead to paradise and the pleasure of Allah, and then likewise from, from the worldly affairs. From the worldly affairs. So no doubt a believer, he will return to Allah and ask Allah for all of his affairs. The religious affairs and the affairs of the hereafter. And likewise, the worldly affairs. But here the issue now is with regards to asking by the face of Allah. No one will ask Allah by his face, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for anything except for paradise. And that which will bring him near to that. And that which will bring him near to that. The author, he says, fihi masail. In this chapter, there are masail. There are issues. Al-Ula and Nahyu and and Yusala bi wajhillahi illa ghayat al-matalib. The first issue is the prohibition for asking by the face of Allah for anything except for the, the peak and the highest, the highest of all requests and hopes and desires. So the one who asks by the face of Allah, he will only ask for that which is most lofty and that which is most high. And that is, and that is the paradise and that is the Jannah and that which leads to that. From the clarification that this is the most high and the most lofty affair is that those who enter paradise, they will see the face of Allah. By His grace, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَسْأَلَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَمِنْ فَضْلِهِ So, الثَّانِيَ, the author, he says, إِثْبَاتُ صِفَةِ الْوَجْهِ Also in this narration, there is the affirmation of the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah Azza wa Jal, He has a face in a manner befitting His majesty. These are from the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal that He has affirmed for Himself in His book. وَيَبْخَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ so this is affirmed in his book and likewise affirmed in the sunnah of the Prophet So the people of the sunnah, they affirm for Allah from the attributes that which Allah has affirmed in his book. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they affirm for him, Tabaraka wa ta'ala, that which his Prophet has affirmed for him likewise without resembling that to the creation whatsoever or without denying it or changing the meanings and without asking how. Without asking how. Rather they affirm that in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah. سبحانه وتعالى إثبات وجه الله عز وجل كما يليق بجلاله وعظمته سبحانه وتعالى just like the rest of the attributes of Allah عز وجل to affirm them in a manner befitting His majesty without liking them to the creation or resembling to the creation or without distorting or changing the meanings or denying them and the likes like this this is the methodology of Ahl sunnah with regards to all of the attributes that are affirmed to affirm them uh, in the most perfect and complete manner, in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah Azza wa Jal without likening them or resembling them to the creation whatsoever. All of these uh, evidences here in the Book of Allah clarify the proper methodology with regards to this affair uh, of Ahl Sunnah, Alhamdulillah. After this, the author, he mentions Babu ma ja'a fi law Babu ma ja'a fi law The chapter with regards to that which has come about saying if it had been this or if it had, had been that. And inshallah, we take this chapter in the class to come. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.